Shenzhen by night. We're here with Duncan Turner. Hello. This is Hacks, of course. This is Hacks. This is the uh, this is the epicenter of all the uh, operations here at um, Hacks. Fantastic. In above the electronics markets. That's right. See the electronics market all around here. Unbelievably cool place to be, and people going down. Oh, have a great weekend, guys. Duncan, it's, uh, what is it, like 8 or 9 o'clock on a Friday night? What the hell it's are you doing that. here? Well, actually, I've been waiting for you <laughs> so that you can film this. But obviously, normally, I would be staying here as well. I was a little bit worried that everyone was going to leave, but then no. Oh, no, they're still... Most people are still here. Yeah. So we're in kind of crazy period at this, at this moment, as you know. Why is it so crazy? It's a week before our Asia pre preview day. So we have like a, it's a private event, but basically it's for a number of, you know, the ecosystem community around the place. So yeah. VCs in the area, um, partners that we've been working with. And it's just Germany kind of commemorates the end of the activities here in Shenzhen. Yeah. Yeah. And then we wait for two and a half months. The teams kind of get their prototypes working really well, nice. And then we launch in San Francisco. And the demo day will be here, will it? It'll be in here. Excellent. We can sit 130 people there. It's not really a proper demo day. It's more of just like a hard stop. Yeah. It's like, you've got to get your stuff done by now. Yeah. Because we know it's going to take you another two months to actually have the prototype. Yeah. And Duncan, what's your yeah. role here? I'm general partner of SOSB and I'm managing director of dislocation. I'm responsible for all of the operations, for the investments that go through this location, and for the increasing number of staff members that we have here. And how many staff do you have? Around 28. 28 staff. Around 28. It's a constantly evolving number. Yeah. Uh, we have 17 teams in the current batch. So we're full stack design and engineering and sourcing. So we've got two people in the sourcing department, um, five mechanical engineers, a robotics engineer, a technical director who's incredibly gifted, who's also the program director for the Hacks program. Yeah. We have a Hacks China program director. Yeah. So two separate people. Um, then we have um, electrical engineers, we have two industrial designers, um, and then we have a whole bunch of operation staff that help with getting people settled in. Logistics. And Logistics, yeah. exactly. I can't help but notice that there, in the background of this, there's that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, what does that mean? That what? says, uh, why the face? Why the face? <laughs> yes. Why the face? Everyone, I wasn't yeah, sure what that else. meant. This actually appeared in appeared. the office oh. about nine months ago. I had no idea who had made it. This is a photograph that was taken from a screenshot in... Um, oh, 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 okay, okay. Yeah, and then, uh, and then somebody turned it into a meme and it went on to WeChat, which is how we communicate here. It turned out it was actually one of the teams that was leaving. It was like a yeah. leaving gift. But yeah. they, they made it and then didn't tell me. And then for nine months I was guessing. And then just as they were leaving, they, they, yeah, yeah. they let me know. It was there. Okay, excellent. So I noticed there's still on a Friday night. There's a lot of people here. So this is actually, this is where all the staff sit. Yeah. Here and here. Peter's our um, director of manufacturing. Yeah. He's very experienced. He's got kind of 15 years um, experience from anything from mold making to kind of um, selection of suppliers to um, technical sourcing. And yeah. then over here we've got uh, these are little phone booths. When people have been naughty, we lock them in there. This area is normally the busiest area. This is where a lot of the teams just hang out, chat. They eat food here. They play ping pong here. There's a ping pong robot here normally. You can do your laundry here as well. You can do your laundry. Well, we actually do it for the teams. It's you do laundry that, right? for the teams? Yeah. The well, that's a full service. Yeah, well, we charge. Do you like to, <laughs> do you like to fold it as well? No, we don't fold it. No, we just they get it in a plastic bag. Oh, but is it you yourself that's doing the laundry for the teams? Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do all the laundry. Yeah. Fold their underwear. Make sure that they've got a yeah. clean pair every day. Yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. <laughs> Wonderful. And then this is, this is basically you know, where all of the teams in the current cohort sit. Yeah. So we've got 17 teams here right now. It's approximately 55 people. Yeah. Um, they're here working normally you know, 14 hours a day, I would say, on, on average. Everything from you know, med devices, consumer health tech, robotics, um, advanced manufacturing companies. We've got um, consumer 
companies. Over here is actually um, Nexting Co, a team that kind of outgrew and uh, needed their own space. Then from here, all the way to the back, this is the alumni. Yeah. So these are teams that have come through the program, they've graduated from Hacks, and then they're back in Shenzhen, either gearing up for shipping or developing a new product. And the folks here, they basically can just work here for free. Yeah, yeah, we encourage it. Yeah. yeah. Actually, you know, and the reason is that actually a lot of the teams in the current batch learn more from them than they do from anyone else. Yeah. They've been through the process. Yeah. They're all doing manufacturing and assembly in different places. Yeah. They've got great contacts for suppliers. Yeah. They help each other with advice on marketing, on fundraising. Yeah. They make connections to each other. It's yeah. really a fantastic yeah. community. And this is what we just want to continue to build here in Shenzhen. Because yeah. there's nothing like this here. We have over 150 people come through the door every day. These are meeting rooms on the right, so yeah. teams can just come and use those regularly. We try and make yeah. sure. There's somebody who's talking to himself. Uh, Maybe he's on the phone. I'm sure he's on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is quite interesting that happens here is that you sort of get these little clusters, yeah. right, forming. Yeah. So yeah. over there is like the Hack 7 cluster. Oh, it's like the batches are breaking out. Of A little areas. bit, and then yeah. Hacks 8 kind of hang out around here with a couple of Hacks 3 people. And then this is all the Hacks China. Oh, Hacks China. Yeah, Hacks China will hang out here. You did the office design here. Did you try to make this feel a particular way? I did want it to feel a little bit more startup y I think our last, yeah. our last location was a bit too flash. Flash, oh, yeah. Think? So that's what you say in, in the UK. It's a little too posh. A little yeah? too posh, yes. Posh, yeah. All right. I sound like my mother. Um, then um, this is um, actually Wazer. They're gearing up for shipment. So this is a water jet cutter. Water jet cutting, this is uh, yeah. cool. Went on Kickstarter about $1.4 million. Fantastic result, that one. And they're going to ship on time as well. Yeah. They're very committed. They are very committed. There's five of them here at the moment. Yeah. This is our makeshift bio lab on the right. This is currently being constructed properly downstairs. G Code told me that the blood was actually just to scare people. Indeed, that is why it's there. It's not actually blood. And it's actually not contamination, which no. it's contamination. It's contamination, yeah. We had a sign at our hotel we're staying at, and it says, carefully slip in the <laughs> bathtub. Yeah. So many good ones. My favorite was a urinal that had a, a little placard above it that said, stand closer, closer to civilization. <laughs> So this is, this is the workshop, and this is actually way too small at the moment. So um, we're moving downstairs, so it's going to be ready in about a week. Yes, mm. we're moving in about a week, but there's no lights yet. There's no lights yet, yeah. 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 That's the last thing they put in. But they move remarkably quick in China. Like they're, doing, they're doing quick, yeah. It might take a bit longer than a week. I, I was saying, I was saying. <laughs> this whole area will be expanded to approximately five times the size it is now. Yeah. For the so, workshop. For the workshop, yeah. yeah. So we're going to have uh, two, another 2,300 square meters yeah. downstairs. So it'll yeah. be, again, basically doubling the whole size of the office. Yeah. Um, we'll have innovation centers there for corporate partners. We'll have office space for companies that have expanded a little bit, but we want them to keep in the community. Yeah. And then we'll have this immense workshop. An immense workshop. Yeah with big gear. Most of the stuff that we use for fabrication is done outside still, because That's right. Shenzhen is the perfect area to do yeah. that. But certain things, particularly as we're growing to scale and we've got a lot of larger scale robotic stuff, actually it really makes sense to have some manual tools and manual yeah. machinery there. Yeah. A couple of um, pretty interesting advanced manufacturing prototypes here for yeah. um, new ways to make things. The majority of the tools we have here are actually inspection and analysis tools. Yeah. So we don't really want to do too much fabrication here. Most of it gets done outside. Yeah. Things get assembled here, they get tested here. You know, we've got an aging chamber here to test product life cycles. Um, out the back there, we've got kind of water jet cutting and then we've got laser cutters. What's the noise back there? Uh, that's the, the, so they're doing a life cycle test on the water check cutters oh. at the moment. It's actually cutting right now. So they have it constantly oh, cutting. Cu yeah, they have it constantly cutting. But it's just finished the cut. So this is simulating cutting at the moment. I see. So they can just have that on a constant test. Yeah, a lot of times people don't realize how much test rig work there is. Yeah. 
Yeah, totally. So this is um, this is actually a test rig for one of our companies. This is a test rig for the um, company that are making insect protein oh, wow, for human cool. consumption. Um, so they've actually fully injection molded all these parts now, these trays, and then this one's going on a life cycle test um, just to check some of the critical components of that, of that product. Cool. So what advice would you give to a company that's trying to get into hacks? Something that is going to increase their odds for success. I know it's very difficult. It is difficult, yeah. So we got over 1,250 applicants last year for 38 spaces. Yeah. There's a team of us looking at the applicants, obviously. Yeah. Um, Technical due diligence, of course, is one of the, um, the hurdles that we have. And making yeah. sure that you've proven the, the, the principle of the prototype that you've created um, and that you have a way of tangibly demonstrating that to us. Or that you've got experience of doing something very similar before and you can show that very clearly. Yeah. The most important thing though is the team. So yeah. we're looking at founders that are going to be committed, that have got a decent amount of experience that we know that they can ship, they're going to stay by it, and they're going to take advice from us. Be coachable, be yeah. able to learn from the mentors. We see it time and time again, the, the, the teams that come in that are humble and that kind of listen and learn and ask questions are the ones that tend to come out and do exceptionally well. Yeah. So you've got technology, you've got team, and then, and then the application, right? Like yeah. What's the actual product you're working on? Yeah. What's the marketplace now? And what they come with versus what they leave with, what's the value that uh, you think that Hacks can give to those teams? Sure. Everything that we concentrate on is iteration of prototypes and understanding the business model which is underpinning um, what they're doing and then getting them to a point when they leave, that they're launch ready. Yeah. Everyone's doing different projects, they're at different stages, so we have incredibly advanced robotics companies next to very simple consumer tech. So not everybody has done full DFM whilst they're here. Yeah. DFM Every meaning design, design for manufacturing. manufacturing. Yeah. yeah, but they're all at a point in which they understand enough about what they need to do that they yeah. can give investors or um, potential customers a good idea of when they're going to be actually shipping. Yeah. That's critical. Then another one is actually embedding them into the ecosystem of Shenzhen. Yeah. When they first come here, the first month is really quite difficult, getting the first prototypes made. Yeah. But then once you've kind of harnessed that energy and that power, they've then got that for life. They've been yeah. taught that and they can then use that for the rest of the time in their business. Yeah. So that could be increasing um, the yield on an on a R&D um, cycle, yeah. that could be for them getting to manufacturing much quicker, that could be for them just negotiating with suppliers, or yeah. them just understanding how to very quickly get prototypes made quickly. Yeah. And uh, of course there's also that issue of getting the bomb down to something that makes their products super competitive. The bill of materials, yeah. the cost of the goods that they sell. That's a big part of what it means to come to Xinjiang, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So, you know, the, the major point is that they, they prototype with production-ready parts. Yeah. So the problem with doing a lot of this in the West is that you can come up with something which works really well, then you get to China and everything completely changes. Because yeah. they're using different chips, they're using different components, they're using di different processes to make things. The whole purpose of coming here to do your R&D is that you're actually using production grade materials yeah. and you're also working with suppliers that are used to producing not just prototypes of a few, but then tens, hundreds of thousands. That inherently has an effect um, in a very positive way yeah. on, on the actual design of the, um, of the devices. Yeah, great. So any last bit of advice for teams that want to get a little further, faster? Doing a hardware startup is really tough really, really tough. And anybody who's going to quit early on is going to be in big trouble. You know, yeah. if people, it, one, of, one of the classics is like, oh, I'm not sh quite sure I can come to Shenzhen for three and a half months, because that sounds really difficult. Like, well, you know what? Don't do a hardware startup, because it's going to be 1,000 times worse. Right, right. And, right. Th and, you know, th that's one of the things I say to many of the teams. You need a kind of a, a, a culture within the startup of never giving up because yeah. there's going to be so many different hurdles you get to. Yeah. And if you trip on the first one, you'll just, you'll just never get anywhere. Whereas, you know, keep tripping, stumbling, get up, and then you'll get there. Well, thanks, Duncan, for taking this time on a busy Friday night here at Hacks uh, to, to spend some time with, with us. It's been my pleasure. Excellent. Hope you enjoyed it. There we go.
We're done. We're good. Wrapped. Okay. Nice. We can go home. <laughs> USA, here we come. <laughs>